Hi there, this is Sunmesh from Piximperfect and I have a question for you. Do you think that the color balance adjustment in Photoshop is an absolute scam? Well, maybe it is, maybe I think it is and I want you to disagree with me. But before you do, I recommend that you watch this video till the end. Now, the goal of this video is not to prove whether color balance is a scam or not. It is to understand the mechanics of how it works and there are some details, believe me, that's gonna blow your mind. So without any further ado, let's get started. back in the magical world of Photoshop and let's get started with our very first example. So let's simply apply a color balance adjustment layer here by simply clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choosing color balance. Now for simplicity, let's unlock the background layer. Now let's say inside of color balance, we are in the mid tones section. Now keep in mind, it can target the shadows, mid tones or the highlights. Let's start with mid tones. We'll talk about preserve luminosity later. For now, let's target the midtones. And in the midtones, we move the very first slider all the way to the right towards red plus 100. We will make sure whether we can replicate the same thing with a different adjustment, with a more versatile adjustment. And if you have been watching Piximperfect long enough, you would know what that adjustment is. <laughs> Curves, all right? So how do we make sure that curves can do the exact same thing? The method that we can use here to make sure that two things are exactly the same is called difference. Forget about all of this for a moment. Let's say you have a layer and in that layer, you paint with a random color. Let's choose this color and start painting over it. You create one more layer, right? And you paint with the exact same color on top of it. And when you change the blend mode to difference, you will notice that that area becomes black because the difference between X and X or the same values is zero, right? So therefore it turns zero. However, if you had a different color right here, let's say orange or red or whatever, it wouldn't be black because the difference between yellow and the blue beneath it is not black. So this is how we can use the difference technique to figure out whether the curves adjustment is doing the exact same thing or not. So this layer has been affected by the color balance adjustment layer. All right, let's make a copy of this. All right, so this one is the color balanced one. Also to make sure color balance is limited to just this one, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers so that it doesn't affect the layer which is beneath it. All right, and for this layer, we're gonna apply curves to it. To apply curves, we're gonna create a curves adjustment layer on top of that, we don't have to clip it because there's just one layer at the bottom. Now let's go to reds. Now I turned off both of those layers and if I increase the reds, it looks like it did a similar thing. However, it might not be exactly the same. How do you check? Again, use the difference blend mode. So turn this color balance layer on, turn on the adjustment as well and change the blending mode of color balanced layer from normal to difference. If there is something and if it's not black, it means that the curves is not doing the exact same thing. All right. There is something right there. Now to see more of what is there, maybe we need to create a curves adjustment layer at the very top and just make things a little more brighter to see if there are things. Yes, it's not exactly matched. We need to do a little change in curves to make sure that matches. So let's go to the red channel and let's try to match it. First of all, let's keep it this way, all right? Or take it all the way up. There's nothing there. We deleted that point by taking all the way up. Now, how do we make it black? Well, with the help of the hand, wherever there is something, you click and drag it up or down to see which is getting it closer to black. So now the more I take it, the more that area becomes black. See, it is black now. Now this area is a little red. So what we'll do, we'll just click and drag it down. All right, now that has become black as well. Now you can work your way through different areas to see how you can get this to look absolutely black. Now once you do, I took the time to do it. Now this is looking already great. Now let's do this area. Now it is mostly black. As you can see, there is not much difference. Now I took a little more time and I already created a little more points. So this is what I created. Now, as you can see with this preset, 
here. It's absolutely black. Now, if I change the blend mode of the color balance layer back to normal, you will be able to notice that. Let me just turn this off. This was just for checking. All right. So this is done with curves. See, I turned this off. This is curves effect. And this is the color balanced effect. And there is basically no damn difference. So this is the curves. This is the color balance. So what did we learn from this? Anything that can be done with color balance can be done with curves, right? Now you might be thinking maybe just because the curve is a little advanced right here, just because the curves is a little advanced, you might think maybe this is based on the image. Maybe the midtones is based on the image and it's creating an intelligent midtone boost. Because if you have a look at the histogram, most of the histogram is on the left hand side. So maybe it is creating a curve in such a way that is particular to that image. So I thought maybe color balance is clever. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe it is doing an intelligent job. So here's what I did. I moved to example number two. Now this is bright image. Now if you look at the histogram in there, if you just simply create a curves adjustment layer, you'll be able to look at the histogram or you can open histogram separately. You would notice that most of the things are on the right hand side. Okay. So if we were to boost the midtones, maybe by that logic, the curve should have been something like this, right? Inside of reds, something like this, but it's not that. It's the exact same thing. So even in here, if we create a color balance adjustment layer and for the midtones, if we take the reds all the way to the right hand side, this is what we get. This is the color balance layer. All right, let's limit color balance to that. And for this one, let's create a curves adjustment layer, right? We want to match it to that. So change the blend mode of this one, of the top one to difference. Okay. And now we're going to just try the curves a little bit, the red channel to make sure we match it. And to match it, we have to make it black. So to check it a little more, we can just make things a little more brighter. All right. Okay. That was just a check layer at the top. Anyway, let's come back to curves and let's go to reds. Now, if we try to apply our new theoretical logic, it won't work very well here. There are some areas which are still red. However, if we apply the same curve here, the one that we worked with in our previous image, the reds three, this is just a preset that I created. See, it's absolutely black. So color balance is not doing anything intelligent here. It has a curves preset that it's applying. That's it, right? Now, what happens when you apply it to 50% instead of 100? So let's say the color balance here for the midtones was not 100, was 50. Well, all you have to do is to go to the curves, right? Go to reds and then select all of these three points. I'm sorry, I moved it and bring it down. That's it. You might have to adjust it a little more. A much more easier way to do this is this. Let's set it to how it was. Easier way is simply decrease the opacity. So as you decrease the opacity, you will notice it slowly and gradually begins to get blacker and blacker. There you go. This is 50 as well. That is 50 as well. And there you have it. Absolute match. Now, if you change the blend mode from difference to normal, you'll be able to see what I mean. Now turn off the check layer. So this is with color balance. This is with curves. Color balance, curves. The exact darn same thing. Now let's talk about shadows. Now this is where it's going to blow your mind. Let's do shadows and then we'll see what I mean by blowing your mind. Well, if we go back to color balance, let's reset it. Okay. Also, let's go to curves and also reset it. Right now inside of color balance, we're going to go to shadows and we're going to do the same thing. Let's increase the reds. Okay. Now, Change the blend mode again to difference to see the, if there's any difference. Let's turn on the check layer to brighten things up a little bit. And now with the curves, let's try to plot the red channel. All right. So with the help of the hand, we're going to try to do the same thing. Let's choose a point right here. Bring it up. All right. Now it's black. This one as well. We're going to try to bring it up. Do you see a pattern here? It's the same curve with a little less intensity. So does that mean that the midtone and the shadow is the same thing? 
just with a little less intensity. So what is plus 50 in mid tones? Is it just plus 100 in shadows? Is that how Photoshop or the color balance is trying to fool us? Well, let me show you one more proof. If I just simply choose the previous curve for the midtone that we plotted, which was reds 3 as you can see, and if we just decrease the opacity to about 50%, see, the proof is here, my friend. There we go. <laughs> Absolute black. So we can clearly say shadows and midtones, same thing. It's just that the shadows is of lesser intensity than the midtone. They don't target different areas and they should. I don't know what Adobe is thinking. Anyway, now let's move on to bright areas, to the highlights. And this is where things change. So for the highlights, again, let's go to color balance and let's reset it. And this time let's target the highlights and take the reds all the way to the right. Similarly, in the curves, let's just reset it and let's try to plot it. So we're going to go to the red channel since it deals with red. With the help of the hand, we're going to just click and try to drag it up. There you go. Let's see if it's the exact same thing. Now make sure you increase the opacity to 100 as well. We were missing that. Okay. Now at this point, it is the exact same thing. Now, for there are some areas that just don't look right, like these areas. So we need to take it even up. There we go. And in here as well, there are some areas. Now you can also do it with a simple gradient image. This is just for demonstration in real world examples. So you can take a little more time to kind of finesse it. But it looks all right to me. It's mostly black. But in this case, have a look. The curve is a little different. It is touching at the top right? So now it's going to be different here right now. Now in this case, as you can see, now it's the same. Now first of all, let's change it back to normal. Turn off the check layer. You will notice. So this is color balance and this is created with curves. Exact same thing. Now we need to do finessing a little bit with the points, but we can do it with curves. At least we know that. Now if we choose 50 right here, so let's go to the highlights back again. And instead of 100, if it was 50, now things would be a little different since it is also being applied in the corners of curves. So opacity might not work here. So this is 50, right? Let's check again for the highlights. It's 50. Let's change the blend mode back to difference. As you can see, there is some difference. Let's turn on the check layer. And now let's try to just decrease the opacity to 50. Does it work? Well, it does not. See, there are some areas that just don't look right. By the way, this can be a nice effect. We can really modify it to create a nice effect and print it out. Looks like an amazing print. So let's increase the opacity back to 100. Since it is affecting the corners, as you can see right here, opacity won't really work. You would have to go back to the red channel and just modify it a bit. Just make the same curve, but with a lesser intensity. As you can see right here, the way we are doing. Just decrease the intensity of the curve and it would work out pretty well. As you can see, it's going blacker and blacker. There we go. Done, right? There's a little bit left. We need to work on that, but you get the point. Now, if you change the blend mode back to normal, you would notice that it is the same thing. So this is with curves and this is color balance. So what did we learn from this? Number one, anything that can be done with color balance can be done with curves. Number two, Midtones and shadows target exactly the same thing. It is just that the intensity of shadow sliders are lesser than midtones. That's it. Now, number three, and this is where preserve luminosity comes in. Now you might ask, Unmesh, everything is fine, but color balance has a feature called preserve luminosity. Can curves really do that? Well, yes, it can. So if you go to color balance and let's say, let's Let's say, first of all, let's reset it. Also make sure the opacity of the curves is 100 as well. Reset that as well. Now in here, let's do the same thing inside of midtones. Increase the reds all the way to plus 100. Now check preserve luminosity. What it simply does is that it preserves the luminosity or the brightness level. So as it increases the reds, it takes down the combined RGB channel to kind of compensate for it. So if we come down to curves, First of all, let's set it to different blend mode to see if we can recreate it. 
Now let's come down to curves. And let, first of all, let's go to the red channel. All right. Now in here, we're going to apply the same preset, the same plotting that we did. But still, there are some things. It's just not matching because preserve luminosity is checked. So we need to go back to the RGB channel and compensate for it. So the reds are up. So we need to bring the RGB down. Not in similar proportion. It'll be a little different, but we can do it. So basically just understand that we have to just take it opposite in a similar fashion and the curve will look something like this. Now, as you can see, it is black. It is the same. Now, if I change the blend mode back to normal, you'll be able to see. So this is color balance. This is curves. There's a little bit difference. We need to modify that RGB curve just a little bit, but you get the point. So now you understand how color balance works and what happens when you check preserve luminosity. As I told you before, the objective of this video was not to prove whether color balance is the villain here. It is just to understand the mechanisms of how it works. And by now, I'm sure you understand that. But to understand the mechanisms, it is also important that you understand curves in and out. So if you didn't know how curves work, maybe I would recommend that you watch this complete guide on curves. I really put a lot of effort in it. So once you understand curves, most adjustments you'll understand in a snap. Now, the question is, if curves can do everything, why do we need to use color balance? Well, that brings us to our final example. That is example number three. It is just a matter of convenience. Let's say you're not so proficient with curves or you don't have enough time to figure out the best trajectory for your curve. Well, in that case, let's say you just wanted to add a little more magenta to this image, maybe a little more red. You simply went ahead and added a color balance adjustment layer. And for the midtones, just increased the reds and added a little bit magenta. That's it. You didn't have to go to curves. You didn't have to go to different channels and didn't have to modify different lines. I still recommend curves, but when you're in a hurry and maybe it's just magenta you want to add, maybe this makes more sense. And the same goes for levels as well. A lot of you guys said Udmesh is absolutely against levels. I'm not. You should use whatever that is easier for you and whatever that gets your job done. As long as you're happy with it and it's getting your job done, that's all that matters. My only goal is to make you understand the correlation between the different functions and features in Photoshop. And I hope this makes it clear for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching again. I'll see you in my next one till then. Stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.